how cells obtain energy. As seen in the image here, a hummingbird needs energy to maintain prolonged flight. The bird obtains its energy from taking in food and transforming the energy contained in food molecules into forms of energy to power its flight through a series of biochemical reactions. In physics, energy refers to the study of energy and energy transfer involving physical matter. The matter relevant to a particular case of energy transfer is called a system and everything outside of that matter is called the surroundings. Since when heating a pot of water on the stove, the system includes the stove, the pot, and the water. Energy is transferred within the system between the stove, pot, and water. There are two types of systems, open and closed. In an open system, energy can be exchanged with its surroundings. The stovetop system is open because heat can be lost into the air. A closed system cannot exchange energy with its surroundings. Energy associated with objects in motion is called as kinetic energy. Energy associated with position is called as potential energy. Ultimately, most life forms get their energy from the sun. Plants use photosynthesis to capture sunlight and herbivores eat the plants to obtain energy. Herbivores eat the herbivores and eventually decomposition of plants and animal material contributes to the nutrient pool. Some of all reactions, whether to break down large molecules to release energy or to take small molecules and store energy in large macromolecules. You can see here, chemical reactions involved that are used to make large molecules from small ones, or large molecules can be broken into smaller molecules. Anabolic pathways require energy to organize small molecules into larger ones. Like reactions break larger molecules and release the stored energy that can be used in other reactions. In any chemical reaction, the molecule on the left hand side of the arrow are called as reactants. The molecules or substances represented on the right hand side of the equation are all are called as the products. Endergonic reactions are anabolic as they require energy to build larger molecules. Exergonic reactions are catabolic as they release energy. Thermodynamics refers to the study of energy. There are two laws of thermodynamics. The first law states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It changes its form as seen in the image. Light energy is transformed to a chemical energy within the leaves by a process called as photosynthesis. Energy in this ice cream cone is used by these children to ride a bike. The second law of thermodynamics states that disruption is more common. The best analogy to be used is if you clean up your room, it does not stay organized for a very long time. All biological reactions are controlled by a protein molecule called as an enzyme. Hence, enzymes are organic catalyst, a substance that is required in a very small amount and does not get used in the reaction, but helps the reaction to reach its final product. 
An example would be cooking a steak, you need a very small amount of meat tenderizer. Enzymes help reactions by lowering their activation energy and hence reducing the time it needs to form a product. As seen from the image here, the higher peak represents a reaction that requires more activation energy to initiate. Adding a small amount of enzyme lowers the reaction and, and activation energy. Enzyme work best at body temperatures. Any change in temperature, pH, salt concentration will affect its function. Let's see how enzymes work. Each enzyme has a site called as the active site. An analogy would be a lock which can open with the correct key. Hence, a substrate that has the same shape as the active site can attach to the active site and the reaction begins. In the image shown here, notice once the substrate attaches to the active site, it forms a complex. The newly formed enzyme substrate complex then rearranges its molecules and eventually products are formed. The enzyme by the end of this process is released free. Enzymes lower activation energy. Depends on the amount of substrate molecule. This amount is always a small amount. Increasing enzyme in the reaction does not speed up the reaction. The correct substrate is another critical need for a favorable reaction. Each substrate has its own enzyme. In most enzymatic reaction, water is released as a byproduct. There are two ways enzyme reactions proceeds. In competitive inhibition, an inhibitor molecule competes with a substrate for the same active site. An example are antibiotics. The medication competes with the bacterial substrate to prevent an enzymatic reaction. The bacterial enzyme attaches to the antibiotic and hence slows and eventually ends its metabolic reaction. In non-competitive inhibition, an inhibitor molecule binds to another site on the enzyme called as the allosteric site and completely locks the enzyme. Examples, poisons when ingested destroy the organism and it locks the enzyme. In some reactions, we see a regulation where the concentration of the end product regulates the first step in a series of reaction. When more and more products are present, it regulates the process by attaching the enzyme allosteric site and stopping the reaction. All enzymes require assisted molecules. These can be cofactors which are non-protein in nature. Examples could be metal, ions, vitamins, and other organic molecules. The energy currency of the cell is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. It is the main energy carrier for all reactions. The energy stored in the phosphate group present at one end of this molecule. Notice there are three phosphate groups. By breaking a bond between the third and the second phosphate group, a lot of energy is released. Putting this bond together requires a lot of energy as well. If you recall, reactions that require energy are endergonic, while reactions that re release energy are exergonic. In this slide, we see metabolic pathways that are used for energy processing respiration, and photosynthesis. Many reactions within the cell require energy to construct or build larger molecules. In cellular respiration, glucose is used to break down and release free energy. Photosynthesis, organic compounds trap the sun's energy to make glucose. Both reactions are opposite from products to reactants. We will learn about these in the next coming lectures.